The Delore Factory is sponsored by Ladira, a romantic paradise. Lime, value every moment. Illuminous, your transformation begins here. Rituals, grounds for enjoyment. And supported by the Cultural Development Foundation, Creativity, Culture, Community. Do you know why you have a kidney? Do you know what happens when your kidney isn't functioning properly? Is dialysis a word you've heard of, but the concept of what it means isn't clear? We will answer these questions and more. The Dolor Factor isn't a medical program. It's a show that continually asks you to think about your life. And we also ask you to consider the lives of those around you. We inform by example. On today's show, we feature a mother and her son who has kidney disease. Data from the Ministry of Health in St. Lucia shows that a significant number of patients suffer with chronic kidney disease. According to the data, there are currently 95 persons on dialysis at the St. Jude and Victoria hospitals combined with a waiting list of 85 patients and the data also states that dialysis takes up the largest part of St. Lucia's healthcare budget. We also have a doctor with us to ensure you know the facts. So stay with us on this episode of The Delore Factor. As an entertainer, I have seen many wonderful places around the world. But my favorite is Ladera Resort. Ladera is my favorite place to be. But the reasons why are difficult to put into words. Ladera itself is a mystical place that stimulates unforgettable memories in a setting that awakens your passion for nature and evokes romance. This is a place for rest and relaxation, recreation and even recreation. I usually go to Ladera for a brief escape from the everyday but I always leave revitalized and inspired. If you ever imagine what it is like in heaven, I believe you will get a glimpse of it at Ladera Resort. Ladera. There is nowhere else quite like it. Hello, I'm Delia Delore. Welcome to the Delore Factor. I know you're sitting at the edge of your seats because you are ready and you are receptive because you want to learn more, you want to understand more so that you can support more, right? With me today, I have Dr. Mel Clark and she is the one who knows more about the subject than I do. She's the professional here. But it's very important that when you listen to what the doctor has to say, know that we are also have two special guests with us and later on they're going to give you their side of the story and you need to stay and listen, okay? So, Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, why are you here, Doctor? Um, we're here today to talk about kidney disease. It is extremely prevalent, particularly among people of African descent and our population, as we all know, is predominantly of African descent. Kidney disease is considered really the epidemic of the 21st century. And despite that fact, little is known about it by the general public. And that in part is why we're here, to increase public sensitization of um, kidney disease, the implications of it, the cost, the economic, the social cost of kidney disease. And no matter how you look at it, it's extremely expensive. The toll it takes on, I mean, like I said before, the economics and the social aspects of trying to treat kidney disease and treating patients with kidney disease. Mm -hmm. And we think that's very important to bring to light and make people aware of those facts, basically. Mm -hmm. Can we go back to basics? Mm -hmm. What really is the kidney? Okay. The kidney, or the, more, the average person is born with two kidneys. Mm -hmm. um, the kidneys have quite a few functions. They regulate blood pressure, they regulate, they help with producing something called erythropoietin, which helps produce our red blood cells, um, so to keep our blood count normal. The kidneys also have a role in soil, the, meta the metabolism of salt, of things like calcium and phosphorus, quite a few things that we take for granted mm -hmm. that those kidneys do. They regulate the amount of water 
that, for example, if you consume 20 liters of water in a day, you're probably going to urinate quite a bit more than if you're not consuming I do that any I do water one at all. Exactly. <laughs> so, who is responsible for all of that for mm -hmm. the most part is the kidneys. So, those really, and of course, a very important function of eliminating toxins that the body produces on a daily basis. Um, we all produce it. Our bodies are machines, if you want to view them that way. Mm -hmm. And as the day goes by, we, during its normal metabolic processes, you're producing quite a few substances that should not be staying in there. So the kidneys have a role in getting rid of most of those things. Mm -hmm. So when kidneys aren't functioning properly, what essentially happens is all those functions mm -hmm. aren't happening as they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. And there are implications to those things. How, how large is the kidney? The kidney, uh, it depends on your size, the person's size. But on average, we say it's the size of your closed fist. Um, in a taller person, for example, you could have kidneys which could be probably, a, if you look at the lengthwise, 10 to 12 centimeters. In a shorter person, about 9 centimeters. And that becomes very important to us. If, for example, you're going to try to diagnose um, somebody with ultrasound kidney disease, the size of the kidney becomes very, very important. Um, so if, for example, I get a really tall patient, but with kidneys which are, without even looking at other characteristics of the kidneys, but a kidney which on ultrasound is just about seven centimeters, right away that's a red flag, that there is something going on there, that this shrinking is happening for a reason. And usually that's because of fibrosis. Anything that causes injury to the kidneys, um, and the main causes would be diabetes, high blood pressure. There are other causes, but these by far, mm -hmm. those um, chronic non-communicable diseases, by far the main causes of kidney disease, and they do cause scarring and fibrosis and shrinking of those kidneys. So those are giveaways, a dead giveaway that something is going on, a mm -hmm. small kidney that is small in size. Because there is a perception, we have had patients, for example, and we'll talk a little, a little bit about dialysis a bit later, that dialysis shrinks your kidneys, and that is not the case at all. Mm -hmm. Most kidneys tend to shrink when there's a problem. Anything that causes injury to the kidney, with few exceptions, most of the time will cause your kidneys to shrink. Okay, but how will we know that there's something wrong with our kidneys? Okay. Early on, um, you would know absolutely nothing. Somebody who has very early stage kidney disease um, knows nothing. The person is completely asymptomatic and that is where the problem lies. Historically, we've called, physicians have called high blood pressure the silent killer, but there are several silent killers and kidney disease is one of them because there are five stages of kidney disease. There is stage one to three, stage one and two, which we consider early, fairly early stage, stage three kidney disease, which represents moderate damage to your kidneys, and stage four, and five, which we consider late stage. The patient with stage five kidney disease is a patient which, who requires what we consider renal replacement therapy, um, be it peritoneal dialysis, hemodialysis, which is what we offer here on island, or kidney transplant. With the person with early stage kidney disease, and even as far as stage four, that person feels absolutely nothing most of the time. Some patients, for example, who have something we call nephrotic syndrome, who may or may not have a change, for example, in their blood tests, um, what they can present with is a lot of swelling. So patients you find you waking up with swelling around your eyes, swelling on, of, your, of your legs, that usually is a giveaway that something is going on. But kidney failure, depending on what the pathology is, can cause that swelling and usually that's the first thing we look at. Um, because the swelling occurs when somebody, for example, is spilling protein through the urine and that usually is not supposed to happen. Um, there should not be detectable protein in your urine and if that if we detect in protein in your urine we know that something is wrong and we need to find out why it's happening so that's an early clue and that's something we really need to are trying to push this year the need to when you do your yearly physical to have your urine tested as well i think sometimes it's overlooked even as physicians we overlook it mm -hmm. um, so we are encouraging people it's not just your blood test because sometimes you could do your, your renal function what we call your kidney function test and that could be perfectly normal and you are feeling perfectly well but your urine is not tested and what you find if you test that urine you may find blood in it and, you, and these are microscopic things we're talking about it's not you wouldn't see over blood in the urine but if you just test it microscopically there may be blood and there may be protein and those are giveaways that something is going on because usually those things are not supposed to be there um, so basically these, these are the things um, that we are looking for when we see a patient. Mm -hmm. A patient, for example, with late stage kidney disease, however, is a patient who becomes symptomatic. One of the things that most people come in with is because they're feeling extremely weak. And that weakness usually is because the blood count is very low, what we call the hemoglobin. And there's a reason for that. As I'd explained before, the kidneys, one of the kidneys functions is producing, uh, producing erythropoietin, which is a hormone which stimulates your bone marrow to produce red blood cells. 
And your red blood cells are important because essentially they carry oxygen to all the organs in your body, your heart and your brain and every organ in your body. Every organ needs nutrients and every organ needs oxygen. So if your red blood cell count is low, your hemoglobin count is low, um, you're going to feel very weak. And that's because there isn't enough oxygen, enough nutrients getting to the rest of your body. So the kidneys basically, if they fail, or if they are failing and there's um, quite a significant amount of injury, you find that the hemoglobin is low. Whereas the average person, in females, the hemoglobin tends to be a bit lower mm -hmm. um, because we menstruate, for example. Um, but on average, 12 is what you're looking at for the hemoglobin for a female patient and without any underlying pathology. And for a male patient, 13, 14. But the average patient with kidney disease, who we are late stage kidney disease, whose, whose erythropoietin is not being replaced, can have blood counts as low as four mm. and a six. And those patients do tend to feel extremely, extremely weak. Another thing that patients come in for, for example, is it could be one of two things. They're urinating excessively or they're not urinating very much. And with very, very late stage kidney disease, the not urinating very much tends to be the bigger problem. And that causes an issue because if you're not urinating, that means you're not getting rid of the fluid that you're consuming and the fluid that the body produces normally as with its normal daily activities. So that is staying somewhere. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that's why you get patients swelling later on, you get a lot of swelling of the legs, a lot of shortness of breath. Well, you have really informed me much more than I thought you would. And later on, I'd love you to come back to tell us what's happening with the uh, Solution Renal Association, okay, in your special week that's coming up. Thank you very much. Stay with us. When we come back, our guests have more to say that you need to hear. So see you soon.